Welcome back to Instant Replay Live, and today I read something on the internet that I thought was kind of interesting. Star Wars Episode 7 cancelled. <laughs> Not that. But thanks for jumping ahead of the topic, Joe. Yeah. For the only time I have ever given you a clue about what I'm going to bring up, really you did. decide to do that. <laughs> Look at this clock of death real quick. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's I like it, majestic. actually. Yeah. Oh, it's, I'm dead. It's neat. <laughs> You're dead. Um, it was a shower thought on Reddit that somebody posted, and they said, Han Solo seems really cool until you think of his real-world analog. He's a trucker who smuggles illegal weapons and drugs across the border <laughs> with oh, his man. dog in the passenger seat and he dates a chick who tried to make out with her brother. Nice. That 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 makes me like Star Wars even more. <laughs> That is such a weird view of who yeah. Han Solo is, though. He is... All of those things are true yeah. of, like, of the real-world analog for Han Solo. He would be a terrible person. Someone who's running guns across a border is not okay. You know, the thing is, though, I don't really understand... We, we kind of love villains Ooh, in general. Key. Yeah, yep. no, I was trying to go back up and get it. We love villains and, like, and villains... And anti-heroes. Like, and anti-heroes. Like, why is that? Like, what... <clears throat> uh, so, I, I read an interesting thing about it today, actually, or I listened to... Uh, it was it was a, a you know like a how to um, make characters interesting kind of thing, uh -huh. and the problem with heroes is that they're often reactive and villains are yes. proactive, yeah. and that's inherently interesting. The other um, thing to me about an antihero or a villain, when they're made well, when they seem real, is how does a person get from just being cool with everyone else to terrible terrible acts mm -hmm. against humanity. You know, how are you okay as Darth Vader with blowing up an entire planet? Well, he was Hayden Christensen, so... <laughs> he wasn't Hayden Christensen at that point. <laughs> I mean, he had been in his life. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if I had been Hayden Christensen, I'd You would I'd destroy an entire planet, too. too. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I think it's it's super interesting. I love villains. I love Breaking Bad is yeah. the best show. Uh, you have a cat climbing your microphone box. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> you have to... Yeah, we're having technical difficulties, everyone. Hang we're on. We're having catnical difficulties. Keep it, keep it talking, Joe. Meowntical. I mean, yeah, so uh, that's that's exactly where I want to talk about, though, is, like, why why do we accept uh, Walter White? Uh, you can't, I can't see the screen. Oh, okay. Um, like, why are we so... Why do we care uh, for Walter White to succeed in that show, you know? Uh, and to a certain point, like, I think... I guess we drop off the point where we want him to succeed because he betrays everything... Right? Yes. But, uh... Right. You don't... Well, I kind of wanted him to succeed the whole time, but I understand where you're coming from. There is a point that Vince Gilligan wanted the audience to stop rooting for him at some point. They wanted him to become too far of a villain. And, um... And I know what those points were, and I agree with them. Like, he really... If he was a real person, I couldn't possibly stand him. Mm -hmm. But as a character, I love him still... Because he shows how easy it is to go so dark, you know? And they definitely tricked us in that show because we had so many reasons to sympathize with him in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and then he did it all for him. Yeah. He was good at it. And it was, oh and man, he liked it, was it great, yeah. Yeah. It's such great writing. Um, I mean, it is my all time favorite show. Mm -hmm. And he is a believable villain, 100%. You can totally see a person going and, and getting greedy and getting power hungry. And not stopping on something like that. I. <sighs> but is that like all it takes, right? To be like, you, 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 there's some things you can sympathize with, and then like they're 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 doing things that are interesting. Is that what what it takes for us to root for a villain or to like a villain? Uh, what? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Actually, I don't know. I mean, that feels sympathy so goes short. Like so That's definitely true. Such a long way. Yeah. Okay, I can see. And then also cleverness is a major factor. Yeah. Walter White is an extremely intelligent character, and I respect intelligence far more than a brute, right? Like, a yeah. brute is boring. An intelligent character is going to show me and teach me things that I could never have possibly known myself. And granted, the science in that show does not hold up. <laughs> like, Well, in a way, it's kind of like the, the, the Conan the Barbarian argument for villains. They, they hire people that were all taller than Conan just so they would appear threatening. Mm -hmm. And a smart mind is intimidating. And that's kind of the last intimidating thing that you can have because yeah. you have guns and explosive crystals and everything that Walter White has, you know, like... Uh, you have to make your villains more than just uh, a fist. 
I was saying Walter White is the villain. That yeah, is yeah, but I was, I was thinking about Gus too. Yeah, oh yeah, Gus Gustavo Fring oh. is is definitely a smart villain as well, and, and highly respected <laughs> by the audience, um, even for being a terrible person who's willing to you know cut throats literally by his hand. Uh, well, by his hand sounds like he's using his actual hand. I mean, <laughs> holding a box cutter. Anyhow, if you haven't seen Breaking Bad and you'd like to know more, I'm sure AMC can help you out. <laughs> um, uh, I, I love that show. It is... I, I kind of want to watch the entire series again. I only watched it the one time. Um, and then I watched most of it again, catching up with Rachel. So that's a lie, actually. I'm a liar. Oh, you liar. <laughs> oh, crap. There's things there. Oh. We ended the lies episode, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. It's all running together. No, Wait, this is this is a separate episode. I know, I was trying to lie. Oh. <laughs> um, the problem is, that would have just been a, a lie for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, oh gosh, oh. that thunder is rumbling. Yeah, there's a good storm going what on is outside. The, so this is, uh, you, we mentioned, I think, Jim Henson on the lies thing. What is the... Uh, <laughs> Did we? Maybe it wasn't Jim Henson. It was some kind of movie reference, you know, like, when you have to say, when you have to, like... Uh, okay, well, let me get to where I'm going to do. The, <laughs> yeah. the two doors. The one door is lying and one door is telling the truth. Oh, we mentioned Labyrinth. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, how yes, do yes. you... How, what, what is the trick to, to figuring out which one is the right one to talk to or the right one to ask the question? You say, what would he say if I asked him this? Yeah, okay, that's right. And then if you have multiple questions, it's, it's so easy because then the next sure. question is, and then what is the answer to that mm -hmm. same question? And then you know the truth one had to tell the truth and said what he would say... Or he was lying, and it wasn't what he would say. the The real trick that makes it hard is how do you solve that puzzle? Like Gosh, Maria. Gosh, should we say? Yeah. How oh. do you solve a problem like Maria? We should we should explain that puzzle just in case anyone hasn't seen Labyrinth. You have two characters. One always tells the truth. The other one always lies, and you don't know which is which. You have to ask them questions to identify which is which to be able to proceed. Very common puzzle riddle trope in fiction mm -hmm. and it was in the movie labyrinth which is a great movie and if you don't know that movie you should go watch it definitely over top like just don't watch our show anymore go watch labyrinth <laughs> way better um but anyhow the real thing that makes that puzzle challenging is like and there is a way and i don't remember what it is but how do you decide with only one question mm -hmm. and there there is a way like, if you can only ask one question and you don't get any information from the other one, what question do you choose? I definitely can't, <laughs> like, brain it right now. Yeah, oh, was, yeah. Um, and I just don't remember it, but it's pretty interesting stuff. But yeah, if you have unlimited questions, it's, like, not even a game. It's yeah, just I really like, want another Henson-esque movie now, that kind of yeah. adventure. Well, they're supposed to do Dark Crystal too. Yeah, and there was another one. Someone from... I. There was a, oh, what was it? Some kind of goblin <laughs> short film. Man, I, I, I got a problem with thinking of things and not knowing enough about them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, what about that thing that was like, um, the thing that was stuff? You remember the stuff that was the kind of cool thing? There's but... a word for that. Uh, <laughs> Do you really have a word for that? Yeah, oh, but I didn't put it on here. Uh, you son of, you're baking it up I'm now. not. I, I, can go, I, I can go get the There's list. There's a word for that, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it was totally on that list that I found. It's like a stoner thing to say. Like, what if the universe was in our fingernails? Oh, man, there's totally a, a theory for that, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> universe in our, in our fingernails, wow. You haven't heard that? No. That's like the most common stoner talk. Like, what if a single cell of your body contained an entire universe? Oh, I, I thought you were going to say our like, the, 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 the fingernail in particular was like... Oh, that too. Yeah. The, the Giblian's uh, uterus fingernail theory. <laughs> what? What? I what? don't know what you're saying. G Gib Giblian's? Giblian's. That's, 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 the, uh, that's the name of my standard scientist. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I, don't, don't, don't ask me for information on things that I don't Apparently. know what I'm thinking. <laughs> that would be a terrible idea. Oh, <laughs> oh Whoa. man, I'm okay. so, I'm so high right now. <laughs> uh, uh, that's that's what I've gotten out of this I episode. I don't from know you. what's up there. I don't know what's up there. Well, you're gonna find out next time on Whoa. Instant Replay Live, or, or right now. Uh, you, mm. it's Bandage Girl. <laughs> 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 
Seriously though. You really kick it. Kick Yo, it. plans, free stroke, Sonic Golf. Sonic Golf.